Hello and welcome to the Fulhamish YouTube channel. My name is Don Bett and on today's video we're looking ahead to Wednesday's massive clash up at Turf Moor against Burnley. And joining me is Matt from No Name Never, the Burnley podcast. How are you doing, Matt? Yes, not so bad. Thanks, Dom. Yeah, so this is obviously a massive game now, considering results of both teams. Obviously, you guys won 3 0 away at Palace. I think, you know, when people, when, when we saw that you were scoring, you know, two or three goals away from the moment, Crystal Palace, we were like, this isn't exactly what we needed, but we know what Palace's record is like without the likes of Wilfred Zaha. You know, I think they've not won or, or, or don't tend to score at all, really. So it was a good result for yourselves. We obviously beat, beat Everton on Sunday evening to give ourselves a small chance of staying up and Newcastle obviously lost last night against Chelsea, which helps our case because we now play twice before they play their next game. So we could even be, if we were to get the victory over you guys and Sheffield United, only one point behind Newcastle going into their game, lumping on the pressure on them. But Burnley this season, coming from myself, it seems like they're having quite a similar season to what they've had in the last few years where on the, for the first few months of the season, it looks like they're in a relegation battle. And then when it comes to sort of December and the January, February time, they sort of see themselves where you guys still fairly worried that you could get drawn back in. Um, I think what you said just before about um, the next couple of games are crucial. We both seem to have a, a run of three uh, consecutive matches against teams around us. And they are always the games that decide whether you stay up or whether you are dragged into that battle. So we had Palace, which was a bit massive win for us on Saturday. We've got this rearranged game against yourselves. And then obviously we've got to uh, come down to you in May and play you again. Um, and we've got West Brom this Saturday at home. And I mean, there's no home or, or away advantage at the minute without crowds. It, it's all up in the air. So the feeling amongst fans is that if we can get at least one, if possibly, if we can win both of these matches this week, we will feel that we are safe. We will feel that results would have to go incredibly against us for us to then be drawn back into the relegation battle. But were we to lose or you know only get one or two points, then we would feel like we were still really in it and we wouldn't be comfortable. Because after this, we then go into a run of matches that involves Arsenal and Spurs and Leicester. And although we've pulled results out of the bag away at Liverpool and away at Arsenal um, this season, they're, they're usually results. You usually only get one or two of those per season. So uh, I feel that we've probably used up all our lucky tokens so far and that we wouldn't necessarily be expecting to get three points off anyone in that top half um, of the league, really, um, more than maybe once more this season. Um, so, yeah, the, these, this week is being viewed by Burnley fans uh, uh, as a massive week, and they're, they are looking for two more wins, um, and then everyone will be breathing a little easier. Why do you think Burnley tend to have in the in, in obviously there was the season where you finished seventh but you know in the in sort of in quite a few of the last seasons you seem to have a slow start. What do you think that's down to? Because obviously you, you there is definitely quality in the team. We see that <clears throat> in you know wins away at Arsenal, wins away at Liverpool, you know, beating Palace 3 0. Why do you think pa uh, Burnley always seem to have this or sort of slow start to the season? Um it can very, this season it, it was based more around injuries um and the fact that we hadn't brought uh, anybody in, in the window? Well, we brought Dale Stevens in, um, but he was, you know, he was well, always going to just be a squad player, backup player. We didn't necessarily improve the positions that we needed to improve on, um, and we had both uh, Tarkovsky and me missing for the first couple of games, and then me was missing for a few more. And it was only when he came back in, and the, and the two of them were back together in the centre of defence, that, that we started to kind of get the clean sheets and show up the defence and start to kind of get some results. Um, a couple of years back when we had qualified for Europe, that massively impacted on our start to the season then. Um, and it just completely disrupted us having to play twice a week during August. Um, and we it just took us a while to get back onto it. I feel that we are a team of runs. We're, we're either on a, re, on a bad run and struggle to get out of it, or we can get ourselves on a good run and we can go unbeaten for a string of games. Um, this season, we started with our bad run. We've then had the period where we're just chipping away a win here, a loss there, not really any consistency. And this time of the year is the time of year where we usually get a better, um, a better consistency of performance and we usually manage to string a few results together. Um, 
it's hard to say why. Yeah, as long as the team have a good preseason, we usually get a, a decent enough start. It's never usually catastrophic. So when we were in Europe and we we didn't have any preseason really because we had to start playing European games in the middle of July, that that affected us. This season just gone by. Everyone had a shorter preseason, um, and, and Daesh and his team are so focused and based around the sports science uh, and getting enough minutes into people's legs and things and getting the right recovery from injuries before they risk them on the pitch that having a short pre-season won't have helped their plan at all because they've had played all those games in Project Lockdown, had a few, like three weeks off or something, and then had to try and prepare them for a full season, but in a shorter space of time. So it may be that that impacted on them as well, that they just weren't physically ready to uh, to com- to compete. Providing you guys do stay up this season, what do you think is the next step for this Burnley side that the fans would like to see them take? You know, in the next few seasons. Um, well, we've just obviously had this takeover from this American consortium, and uh, you know they came in, and the new chairman Alan Pace was saying all the right things. Then he uh, he had to self isolate. He tested positive for Corona. Um, the January transfer window didn't bring anything which I know it didn't bring much for anybody but he came in talking about the manager not being uh, frustrated anymore in the transfer window being able to support the manager better and then nothing happens then there's rumors about how this deal has been financed which has kind of put a lot of a lot of fans on edge really and wondering is there actually any money to spend um, or is the money just going to be kind of recycled from from player sales um, this summer will be a, a a very important summer. We expect to lose Tarkovsky this time round. Um, we came very close to losing him back in kind of August, September. Leicester and West Ham both sniffing around. I think if anyone comes up with anywhere near the the value of him this summer, uh, he'll go. He, he he's kind of hinted at it already. Uh, he's hinted that you know he's maybe missing out on England selection because of playing for Burnley, which seems daft given that. Nick Pope is in the England squad regularly, but um, he feels that I think he feels he's ready to make the next step up, and he will go with our blessing. I think you know, having given us a good five years, um, we might also lose Dwight McNeil. You never know if someone comes in with with a, an offer for him. So it's an aging squad, um, and as long as we as long as we hold on to our manager, um, then we have the trust in him to rebuild that squad. He needs the backing, though. He needs the money. Um, you know, we, we we tried a few bids in this window, um, and they were, you know, they were nowhere near people's valuations. If we take that approach again in the summer, and he is just ends up being frustrated, and we end up starting next season with only like one additional player or something, it's it, everyone else is moving forward, and we're standing still. Um, and what the fans want to see is us moving forward. Uh, you know, the same speed as the likes of uh, Villa or or Brighton or anyone else who manages to put that investment in and improve their squad to a level where they can compete and survive in the league. That's the that's the minimum ask from Burnley fans. No, no one's necessarily dreaming of Europe again or, or thinking that that could be a, a regular thing. But what we're worried about now is being left behind. So the next two or three years, we've got this new ownership, we need to see them put their money where they said they're going to put it and improve this squad that is, it, it's on its bare bones at the minute, to be honest. Obviously, there's with there's rumours that, you know, not, not necessarily strong ones, but there has been rumours linking, obviously, Sean Dyke with a potential vacancy at Crystal Palace with Roy Hodgson moving on in the summer. Do you think a lack of investment in the summer could be one of the things <clears> that may tempt someone like Sean Dyche to move a team like Chris Credit because it's not exactly a step up. It's all still a sideways step. You guys are both finishing in and around the same places in the table at the moment. But do you think a lack of investment or if he feels there isn't enough from this new new uh, investment coming in, do you think it's something he, could, he would look at or do you think he still would like to take this Burnley team to the next level? Um, the thing about Dyche is he's a very sensible manager. He takes a very low-risk, sensible approach to almost everything, really. His team selection, his transfers, his tactics, and also, I think, his own personal career. You know, he's been here eight years. 
he didn't bring his family with him. His family is still in, in, in the Midlands and in Kettering. He kind of he splits his time between there and Burnley. Um, it would, it would have, and, and I don't see him going to work for a German who, who maybe has, you know, kind of a knee jerk reaction to kind of getting rid of managers. He, he's going to go somewhere where he feels it's a, a, the next step for him in his career. Um, but he's also going to go somewhere where he feels secure and where he feels he's going to be given time and going to be given backing. Um, so that's why when you know these rumours come around, when vacancies appear and his name starts getting mentioned, you kind of think, well, I don't see him going to West Ham because, and I don't see him going here because of this. You, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say I, I'd be surprised he went somewhere like Palace. Um, the, the big ones that would worry us are Leicester or Villa because of their proximity to to his family, you know, in the Midlands, and they have a lot more financial backing and seem to be reasonably settled and sensible, particularly Leicester's ownership seems to be, have settled down now, and, you know, they seem to be giving managers time um, and things. So, um, he he wouldn't go with the drop of a hat, you know, if a managerial position came up mid-season, I, he's not the kind of person who to, would just drop everything and leave. He, know, he he can see that in our history that happened 10 years ago with Owen Coyle. He just left us mid-season and he went instantly from being hero to villain. Um, so Dyche is sensible enough to not repeat that. Um, but if he, if he went in a summer window, you know, he, he would go as a hero, you know, he'd still get his statue outside the turf eventually because he, because of what he's done to the club in these eight years, you know, he's redeveloped the training centre and the academy. He's brought us European football. He's brought us six seasons of Premier League football out of the eight that he's been with us. Um, and yeah, our worry would be who would come next? Who would we replace him with? Yeah, I think I think everyone's sort of looking. Look, I think everyone from the outside would see that at Burnley. Everyone can see the job that Sean Dyche doing. That's why he gets linked with with these other jobs because everyone can appreciate. You know, he's he's not getting you know a hundred million pound invested in in every single transfer window. But if we move on to the game on Wednesday night or Wednesday early evening, six o'clock kickoff. Obviously, this game was supposed to be scheduled back in December, but due to our COVID outbreak, it's been rescheduled for you know mid February. Would you say this game has come as a, a good time for you guys or would it have been better for you guys to have this game back in December? I think we were very frustrated when it got knocked on the head because we, we'd built up a little bit of um, momentum. We'd beaten Sheffield earlier in the week. Um, and yeah, we, we were very frustrated because we felt that this was an opportunity to, you know, I think you guys were on on quite a you know, downer at that time and we, we thought you were there for the taking and we can get the points on the board. Uh, there was still a talk of whether there was going to be some kind of two, three week break completely of Premier League football. And we were desperate to kind of get the points on the board if we could before that happened. The circumstances around why Fulham weren't able to field the side at that point, you know, the rumours around players potentially breaking COVID rules, whether they, you know, how much truth there is and, and how much that impacted on on the isolations that needed to happen and the fact that you couldn't feel the team just adds a little, for some element to the fan, of the Burnley fan base, it, it feels a little almost unfair and there's a little tinge of, right, well, we need to get these beat this week because, you know, they, they've thrown this game out for reasons that, that could have been avoided perhaps. Um, but after Saturday's result... Um, the, you know, the squad will be on a high. There's players on the way back in from injury. Um, the biggest miss uh, on Wednesday will be Ben May. Uh, he has to miss out, even though he, he's absolutely fine after his collision um, and his um, head injury or worrying injury on Saturday where he was stretched off. He was actually off the stretcher before he got to the dressing room. Uh, the, the protocols for concussion now say that he can't play in midweek, but he can play next weekend against West Brom. So that's our biggest worry is um, is the fact that he'll be missing because he has been such a rock for us at the back and has probably gained us more points by, through his defensive efforts than our strikers have gained us through their uh, through their shortage of goals or the few goals that they managed to come up with this season. Yeah, even even though obviously. Um, there, there has been a lack of goals in this Burnley team this season. You still put three past Palace 
on the weekend. Do you think do you think that could be a turning point in regard to your attacking threat that they saw they saw three goals away at a team like Crystal Palace that they'll have the confidence now, but you know, they're not a team you can only win the game by the one goal. Uh yeah, absolutely. Um that that was a complete bolt out of the blue. We were we were pinching ourselves. We were kind of we couldn't believe that we scored too early. You know, we, we always know in these te- in these ga- games uh, against the teams around us, it, if you can get ahead early, then you can shut up shop and, and you can very you can frustrate the opposition. To then ha- get a second goal within ten minutes was just a complete uh, shock. And then Lowton's goal in, in the second half was just it's, it's one of those things you'll see one you know once every two or three years or, or once a season maybe from a Burnley team that type of goal they don't happen that often. Um, so yeah, there'll be a lot of confidence in the squad. Um, I expect him to put out pretty much the same eleven. Um, maybe we've got Charlie Taylor, who could possibly come back in now at left back. He's our first choice left back, and, and Eric Peters, I think, went off on Saturday with a little bit of a, a, a groin injury, I think, or something. So there's a be a change there. There'll obviously be a change uh, for Ben Mee. Kevin Long will come in for Ben Mee, um, but the rest of the team will probably stay the same. I should imagine. Um, and I think I'd like to think that he'll come out and start in the same high energy way that he started on Saturday and really go and try and get an early goal and try and just settle the game because the longer it stays nil nil, the longer the more likely it is that that you guys could come in and get a goal and then all of a sudden we've got to find two and like you say, it's not happened. I mean, I think in the league it's happened. We've scored two goals or more twice this season, perhaps, perhaps three times at the most, um, against Wolves, against Villa, and then again on Saturday. So it's so important that we get that first goal uh, and don't have to go chasing a game because I think we, we really struggle when we have to do that. Yeah, I think I think it's a similar theme for both teams. I think our record on Scott Park since the start of last season is... You know, when we score first, we we tend to we tend to. I think the only game we've lost was the game to United earlier on this season, and we were quite lucky to lose that game. And you know, and when we concede first, I think the only point we've got this season uh, was against Spurs. So it's 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 definitely who scores first is definitely going to be the most likely team to get something out of this game. You spoke about Ben Mee being out. How do you think it's it's best for Fulham to take advantage of someone like him missing? Um. I think it. I think our defense, our defense, it always sets up quite, it sets up quite narrow. It, it almost invites crosses and attacks from wide positions, kind of low percentage chances, and 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 we have the confidence that we can kind of head those away and, and clear our lines time and time again. I think the way teams quite often get at us better is when the there's balls in behind that the, the faster players because there's not a lot of pace in our team either faster attackers can kind of run onto uh, and get into kind of one-on-one situations and, and and we've seen a lot of goals come from from balls just being cut back low across our area and and almost just being tapped in and things like that or a, a moment of a moment of quality from maybe the edge of the box or just inside the box. So I think if you, if you try and attack us and just try and 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 cross the ball in, I think hopefully Long and Taki will be able to deal with them all day long. I think when you get it down on the floor and you're playing it through our lines and we're having to turn and head back towards our goal and deal with low, fast crosses coming in from the sides, I think that's when the percentage of you chance of you uh, of you convert to one of those will go up so players you you look players that would worry Burnley especially going forward will be the likes of Adam Lookman Bobby Reed and we saw Josh Mazur get on the score sheet for the first time in a full shirt on the weekend on his first start for a club so these players who like to you like to sort of run off the last man and get in behind you know even even our wide players like Ken Sete and Olarina who you know Olarina got the assist for uh, the Josh Manager's first goal. The, the, these are the attacks and this and the positions that would worry Burnley uh, on Wednesday night. Then, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, like I say, I mean, I think we can set. We can. We're a very organised team. So when we've got the opportunity to get ourselves set, so from a set piece, from a corner, from a free kick, we can. We'll back ourselves to to defend that and to clear that. Um, 
a good example is when we played Chelsea uh, two or three weeks back. Their first goal came when the ball was kind of turned over to them. I think it was very quick throw in. And all of a sudden they were attacking our back four with with three or four players and, and they moved the ball fast, you know, across the field out to Hudson Odoi on that right, who was able to get past with pace, cut the ball back across and it was in. And we didn't have time to get back and set up our two banks of four. So, you know, if you can break at us from from kind of the middle of the pitch, perhaps, or a counter attack where we've only got maybe our back four or, or three there and we're not got that organization that we that we kind of build our defense on that's probably your best opportunities at, at, uh, at getting a goal against us you know it, if we're all set back then we will probably defend all day long and not knock things away and if but, we um as i said we were spoken off, off off air before we started this about fulham's diabolical record up at turf more i think i was looking and we've probably won there once since 1950 but uh, do you think that will play a part or as you know we 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 never want we want to never won a league game at goodison park before before sunday and we saw us turn turn that record around do you think these records really play a part and you know do you think that really strong home record that Burnley have in this fixture will come into play it? Or do you think because of it being behind closed doors and there's no fans that things like that sort of go out the window? Um, I, I we, We've seen all sorts of... We, well, you've seen more away results, more away wins than home wins um, this season in the league in general. Um, I think because of the lack of fans. Uh, I still think we have... A, re- a little bit of an advantage at the turf. I think, you know, it's quite a small pitch um, and we've done all right there this season against teams from outside the, you know, the, the top six. So I don't think it's completely um, all bets off. I think there's still a, a little bit of a home advantage there, but yeah, it's certainly not the same uh, as it normally is, uh, as we've seen, you know, across the league. Um, all season there's been you know so many away results that you wouldn't normally get um, but I, I'm clinging on to the fact that, that that we kind of like generally make Turf Moor a little bit of a hard place for teams to come and even without the fans I think there'll still be a little bit of that there and if you're if looking at tomorrow's game if you're going to predict sort of 1 to 11 that you think Sean Dyche is going to field uh, what, are you, what are you expecting him to play? Uh, yeah, so like I touched on just before, um, obviously uh, Nick Pope in goal is a given. Um, back four will probably be uh, Lowton, Tarkovsky, Kevin Long, and then either Charlie Taylor or Eric Peters. If Taylor's fit enough to start now, uh, he's returning from injury, then he'll be in. Um, and like I said, Peters did pick up a knock on the weekend, but he may also start. So it's either or of them. I think they're both 50-50 really. Midfield, I expect the same. Um, so Good Munson on the right, Cork and Westwood in the middle, and uh, McNeil on the left, and then up front, um, probably the same again given the quick turnaround from Saturday. So Barnes and Rodriguez, um, because Wood is still on his way back from injury. I don't think he's ready yet, and Vidra picked up a knock which kept him out of Saturday's match. So uh, don't expect that he would come back in, um, particularly given that Jay managed to get his first league goal of the season uh, on Saturday. So he, his confidence and his form will hopefully be beyond the up now. So that will probably be the 11 that I would uh, expect to see. And if I can push you for a score prediction for the game, uh, what are you going to go with, Matt? Um, I think it, I think if we get the first goal, I'd probably back us to go 1-0. I think if you get the first goal... Uh, we might be able to get one back and and take a point like we did against Brighton about a week and a half ago. They came up to the turf. It was a very similar game. They just got the win against Liverpool. They were about three or four points ahead of us. You know, we knew we couldn't lo- afford to lose it. It wasn't a hundred percent a must win, uh, and we ended up sharing the points. Um, and maybe we should have got all three. So I, I feel like it might go a similar way, um, but I don't know. You've only won three matches this season. So, although you had a great win at the weekend, I think there's a feeling that we've not seen evidence that you can consistently uh, do that back-to-back and so on. So, I think we're, we're reasonably confident based on the statistics. You know, we've seen a lot of a lot of good play from Fulham in matches this season. They've looked good quality at times, 
but at the minute there's not the winds to back it up so on that basis we we will kind of look at this as a, a game that we that we could definitely win and we shouldn't we should at least take a point from i think we're very disappointed if you manage to come up here at, and beat us yeah and one last question Obviously, I know you've, you've obviously got the game against West Brom. We've got the game against Sheffield United this this weekend. So, are you seeing this game as a must win, or is it more a must not lose? So you don't, so Fulham don't, you know, get three points catching up to Burnley, and then you could get dragged back into situation if you don't get a win against West Brom on the weekend. Um, I, I think the, the the sensible approach is that it's a must not lose. I think you've got to just keep keep your arms length, keep that eight point cushion. Um, However, there, there will be there will be small pockets of Burnley fans who, who will see this as, as a must win because they just want to get that distance and they feel that we should be able to to beat you, given your record this season. Um, so yeah, from from me, it's more of a must not lose. I'll be slightly disappointed if, if we only get a point out of it because because of the run of games we've got coming up after Saturday. I just feel that we've got to take this opportunity you've got to beat the teams around you to pull clear at the end of the day you know it's basic maths if we were you know if we go and beat teams in the top half of the league and get six wins but lose to people around us we're going to get sucked into it if you take the points off the teams around you you're going to pull clear so on that basis it, it it's uh it's not a must win but it's uh it's a definitely a must not lose and the same goes but for Saturday against West Brom but we've got to win at least one of these two and get a point from the other one well thanks very much for joining us Matt do you want to let everyone know where they can catch uh, your stuff at No Nay Never yeah so we're on Twitter at No Nay Never uh, the same on Facebook uh, we have two shows a week we have an analysis show usually after a match uh, and we also have a shorter preview show uh, which Dom has kindly recorded some of his thoughts for and that will be included and it will be released later today so uh, that's where you can find us yeah, I'll make sure to leave the links to obviously their podcast, Twitter, etc., down below in the in description. Make sure to check them out. Very, very informative. And, you know, if you want to get a, a deeper insight to all things Burnley ahead of his game, make sure to check it out. But thanks, Matt, for joining us. This has been the Fulham's YouTube channel. Looking at to Wednesday evening's clash, Fulham against Burnley at Turf Moor. You whites. <laughs>